Sandy. She was a really attractive woman. Not only was she good looking, she was fun and she was popular. Heck, she was president of her senior class. I only knew her for a few months, but we really connected. And then, well, young and stupid, she got pregnant. She gave me a kiss and she sent me away. She said she needed a fresh start. Now, I was confused, but to my credit, I didn't do what a lot of guys would have done, which was like, I'm out of here, I'm run for the hills. <coughs> I always thought about her. And then when I hit my late 20s, I met the girl of my dreams and we got married. I still thought about Sandy every now and then. And then my wife and I, we had a kid. And I remember looking at that little baby and thinking in a whole different perspective. You see, because I wasn't Sandy's star-crossed lover that she sent away, I was the little baby boy that she gave up for adoption. I knew I had to find out more. I contacted the adoption agency, and they will send you the non-identifying information. The time had been 1960, a time when women, if they're pregnant and out of wedlock, they are shamed. And if they decide to keep their children, those children are lab labeled as illegitimate. Now that is an ugly word. And further, the non-identifying information, I learned that Sandy was 20 years old when I was born. She named me Scott Wayne after her brother. And there were all sorts of other similarities. I thought, I gotta meet this woman. I gotta do the full search for her someday. But it was a time in my life where young family, the thought of adding another person to that was just too much for me. I mean, I was thinking the worst. I mean, what if she's some crazy lady and she just lives right down the block? So I put the paperwork aside. Well. I'm not really a fast mover because I put it aside for like 20 years. <laughs> but there was something about taking that little baby of mine and sending her off to college. And I went, I'm ready to try, try to contact this woman. I went back to the adoption agency and they said, well, we can do a search. No, we have information, but it's 50 years old, no guarantees. And they recommended I write an introductory letter in the event that they could find her and they could share something with her. So I wanted to include in the letter a little bit of humor as well as the facts. And I wrote, well, dear biological mother, you probably remember me as Scott Wayne. However, my Norsky Borsky adoptive parents named me Leif, which is about as Norwegian a name as you can get, right? And I continued on and I told her how I had two siblings, my sister who was also adopted and my brother, well, he was born as if there's a difference, but to me it's just always kind of a family joke and I get a good chuckle out of it. But anyway, I, then I finished it off with what I truly believe. I said, if you ever wonder about me, whatever happened to me, I want you to know, I turned out okay. I had great adoptive family, friends. Life is good for me. I'm living a great life. Thank you for giving me life. I packaged up the letter, I sent it to the adoption agency, and barely three weeks later, the adoption agency called me back. They said, we found your biological mother. Unfortunately, she died five years ago. However, after you, she got married and she had three more children. And those children would like to make contact with you. <laughs> well, in the space of that one phone call, I found and lost a mother and I gained three half siblings. I was overwhelmed. The agency arranged a time for me to meet, to, to, to call my new half-sister, Sarah. And the day before that call, I couldn't sleep. It's a call that for 20 years I knew would happen, and all of a sudden it was upon me. I called Sandy, or I called Sarah, Sister Sarah, and it was a great talk. We talked, we laughed, we shed a few tears. And it was amazing, some of the small world connections. My bio mom, Sandy, she was a Montana girl, but she'd gone to a boarding school in Minot, the town where I grew up, the town where my adoptive parents were teachers. After talking to, to Sarah, I had to quick call my mom, the mom that raised me. I said, what's with this Dakota Lutheran school? Have you ever heard of it? And we researched it and she knew of that school. She actually had interviewed there, didn't get the job, but she knew people that taught there. And we found out eventually that she knew people that graduated with my biological mother. It was just a small world connection. 
The next day, I had to call back Sister Sarah out in Seattle, and I said, you know what's really haunting me is, God, should I have made this call five years ago when, when Sandy was alive? Because it was a total secret. She hadn't told anybody. And Sister Sarah, she said to me, Leif, we were close. I know she had to love you. But given the time and the circumstances, she had no choice but to give you up for adoption. And that is but a pure definition as I can think of as a love that hurts. Hey, Pauline, that was a wonderful story. I really like that.